Okay, so this is a response to amend him. I amend him, however you say your um, name on YouTube. Uh, I watched your anti-natalism video on the anti-natalism podcast, and I agree with your sentiments that life kind of sucks, and uh, ever since I was a little kid, my mom always said, eh, life sucks, and she still does say that, and um, I know pretty much everyone, most people agree with that, and I think most sentient beings would say the same if they could speak. Um, I've dealt with a lot of uh, suffering in my own life. I deal with mental illness, and I still deal with that on a daily basis. Uh, depression and uh, other mental illness problems. Uh, mood swings and things like that as well, which I have to take medication for, and uh, other health issues that arise here and there. I recently got over a uh, strep throat, and I had COVID. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm just, you know, I'm very familiar with suffering, and I know people that, uh, there's a woman, she had to get, she has to get her fluid in her brain drained uh, like once a, a week. Actually, she has a tube and it's constantly drained. So, so she had brain surgery about like five times so far. Um, and each time it kind of alters her personality a little bit too. So the there's all these horrible uh, possibilities for conscious uh, beings to um, experience suffering and animals in the wild you know there's a video of uh, there's plenty of videos of animal the things wild animals do to each other like there's this one where a zebra got part of its face torn off and it's it survived the attack from a, a crocodile tore parts of its face so imagine like having to deal with that um, without any pain medicine, and that's going to be the rest of your life, is, <laughs> you know, get an infection and die slowly of an infection in the wild, and, you know, maybe you'll be lucky and, uh, something will choke you out, like a, a line or something, and, uh, you'll suffocate quickly rather than dying very slowly of the infection. Um... So yeah, I, I understand that, and um, I, I pretty much agree that it'd be great if uh, we could figure out a way to avoid having experience, but I don't think that's possible to um, avoid experience, because experience is always experienced for itself. Only experience is experience, but I'm going to explain what I mean by all that here. Um, <clears throat> first, I need to start by explaining what the self is, or uh, what, what you are, what I am. So, a brain was born, that's what I'm going to refer to you and I and everyone else here on Earth, all sentient beings, if we just uh, condense ourselves down to what we really are, is a brain that is doing consciousness. Or we could say that we are the consciousness. Recently, Sam Harris asked on his Twitter, he said, are you having an experience or are you experienced? And I, I think... I mean, you could look at it either way. You could look at your your body, or are you uh, what the body is doing? Um, <clears throat> and so I I would say uh, we we're more uh, of the experience that is being done by the brain. Um, and uh, so you, 
you didn't exist, but then a brain was born and it started doing you. Um, so imagine that you were never born, but some other brain was born and that brain is doing consciousness. So instead of it being your consciousness right now, it would be some other consciousness. That's, that is what's being experienced rather than the experience of you watching me on this video right now. Um, this is what's called generic subjective continuity. And I know, sorry, my nose is itchy for some reason. I keep scratching it. I know that you uh, acknowledged this before in a video long ago. Um, it, but they called it existential passage. And then um, you were made aware of the philosopher Tom Clark's essay, Death, Nothingness, and Subjectivity. I'm not sure if you read that or not. Um, I, I suggest you do read it. Um, Sam Harris recently did a podcast on it called The Paradox of Death. And you can actually... Um, someone uploaded the the crux of that uh, podcast on YouTube and you can find that if you type in um, uh, Sam Harris why death might not be the end or something like that I don't agree with I wouldn't have chosen that title myself I don't think that's the best title but it's uh, it's the video and I mean it's the podcast it's the audio I recommend listening to that as well um, and then I have several videos explaining generic subjective continuity and uh, what that term means, and you can watch those, but I'm going to explain it right now. Um, so, in Tom's essay, he uses a thought experiment where he basically um, explains that if you were put to sleep and they there was some kind of futuristic surgeon that did surgery uh, while you were asleep and kept changing you to the point where you were basically someone else when you awoke. And we could say that the person that existed before this new uh, person exists, that person has died and a completely new person now exists. But the person that died didn't go into a black void or isn't experiencing an experience of no experience. Uh, they're not resting in peace. The only experience that came after that is the experience of the new person. <clears throat> and so just like every night you fall asleep and then you wake up and you didn't experience the interval, you didn't experience a black void for all the hours that you were asleep, that period of time was simply skipped over until consciousness uh, resumed. Um, and Sam Harris explained this same thought experiment, but he shortened it and he just said, imagine that throughout the day changes were made to you that you started out uh, believing that you had eggs for breakfast, but then in half an hour, you're going to believe that you had cereal for breakfast. And then you just keep making changes and to the point where the person is a completely new person. Well, you get it. Anyways, there's a continuity of consciousness that it, there's no gap in, in this continuity. There's just, you know, and so later in Tom's essay, he uses another kind of, uh, not really a thought, it, well, it, it is a thought experiment, but it's a scenario where he says that even if every single sentient organism in the universe were to die, but then maybe eons later, a, a new sentient organism somehow came to exist somewhere in the universe, then 
instead of all the those ones that died in the past, instead of all them being in a black void, they just simply don't exist anymore. The only experience or consciousness that came after all of their deaths is the uh, experience that's being done by that new one and only brain. Excuse me. I just drank a really big smoothie. Um, so that would be the experience that came after their deaths rather than them being in a black void. Because as I said, only experience is experienced. And as Tom Clark puts it, consciousness is always present for itself. And so, <clears throat> you know, uh, just imagine, like, if everyone died and you're the only one that exists, and then you die, and then, say, the next day or maybe a million years, uh, someone else or something else somewhere in the universe, uh, it comes to exist, and now that's the only experience there is, period. And so, instead of you being in a peaceful black void somewhere, experiencing nothing, or nothingness, the only experience that could come after your death is the one and only experience that is occurring. Because that's the only experience there is. So... Uh, and a, a lot of people will be like, oh, that's reincarnation. I don't care if you call it reincarnation or, or not, but it's logically sound. It's completely naturalistic. And even if brains don't do consciousness, it's still true. Generic subjective continuity would still be true because only experience is experience. So whether or not we, we're souls or whatever, the, the crux of generic subjective continuity is that if at any point in time you, whatever you might actually be, ceases to exist, whether you're a soul or whatever, if, if you cease to exist, but then other consciousnesses exist after you've ceased to exist, then instead of you being a black void or whatever, those will be the only experiences that are occurring and therefore one of them or you know technically uh, they're all occurring after you died but um, only one of them from your point of view can be what comes next just like from your point of view um, so you didn't exist but then a brain was born and then a single consciousness came after your non-existence. So, just like non-existence before birth was followed by a consciousness being done by a brain, so too will non-existence after death. It will also be followed by a consciousness that's being done by a brain. Non-existence will always be followed by a consciousness that's being done by a brain because as I keep saying only experience is experience only experience can be experienced um, so <clears throat> that that's my explanation of generic subjective continuity if you do not if you feel like you don't understand me for some reason a lot of people don't understand this it's to me, it's very simple. It came very naturally. I actually uh, witnessed a, a family member die, and at like shortly after that happened, it just like popped in my head. I realized I was like, "Well, he's not in a black void right now, and uh, he he just doesn't exist anymore." And the and the only consciousness is. The only experiences that are occurring are the ones that do exist, the ones that are occurring. And so it made me realize this. And then a few months later, I found out about Tom Clark and his essay. And then, um, so I went on a mission of trying to popularize 
uh, generic subject of continuity. And I was badgering Sam Harris on uh, Twitter and stuff. I, I'm not sure if I'm responsible for, uh, I, I highly doubt it, because um, Clark wrote his essay in the 90s. But I definitely did uh, pester uh, Sam Harris about it and maybe had some influence on him deciding to, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But um, I've definitely influenced other people to make videos and talk about GSC. Um, so what was I going to say? Oh uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you don't understand this, what I'm talking about, based on what I've told you, then you can check out my other videos and listen to Sam Harris's uh, video, you know, his podcast on it. And um, let me see, Tom did a lot of uh, videos and stuff on, well, he did, he did like five that I could find, I think. Um, and then there's uh, our mutual acquaintance, acquaintance uh, Elijah Everett. He um, did, uh, I forget what he titled it. I think it's just titled Generic Subjective Continuity featuring Tom Clark. And then he did other videos on it. And his channel is What is Wrong with the World. And uh, there's another one. Uh, I believe it, the title is A Secular Case for Rebirth. And that is the channel Entertaining Ideas. That's a pretty good channel overall. I mean, they're they're both really good channels overall. Uh, interesting topics. And uh, so you might be thinking, well, uh, ethelism could take care of this if we get rid of everyone in the universe. Um, or the heat death of the universe, perhaps. Uh, I actually think that that would be just as futile because, um, well, one, uh, I think if, if we tried to, what is this? If we tried to, um, if anyone tried to extinguish all life on earth, <laughs> that would lead to a lot of pushback and war and uh, that's basically genocide it is and you're gonna have a lot of so there was somebody that said well maybe we could exterminate all life on earth and then make robots that go around in the universe and extinguish all all life on other planets and all uh, just you know destroy everything you know and well my thought is after the heat death or whatever situation might destroy all life in the universe, um, uh, forever never ends. There's there's no end to forever to infinity. It just never ever 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 ends, and I can't say that enough. Um, and so eventually, at some point in time, no matter how long it takes. At some point in time, the same processes that brought about the universe we're in now and that brought about uh, evolution and, and whatever happened to cause life and consciousness will eventually, given enough time, and trust me, there is definitely going to be enough time because it's never going to end. At some point in time, it may take forever, and we got forever times infinity, uh, at some point in time, consciousness is going to occur again. And so all the time in between will not have been experienced. It would, from the point of view of consciousness, it doesn't matter. All that time behind it, that it, it didn't exist, just like for you. You only experience uh, your experience. And it, Tom Clark points this out in his essay. It's just like, it's just one solid block of experience your entire life. You, you don't experience uh, being absent from yourself. Consciousness never experiences being absent from experience. Um, so it just, 
is this is never going to end. There's always going to be experience, and some of them are going to be good. And I'm, I mean, I I know you probably don't agree with what I just said. Some of them are going to be good, but uh, some will be better than others, and uh, some will be horrible. And I uh, I I really don't like that because I I know the potential of suffering, the level of suffering uh, in my own life was at points, it, <laughs> it, it got pretty, I didn't like it, you know, um, I didn't have the best childhood, uh, I, I don't know, I, I don't want to talk about my childhood so much because, uh, never mind. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just acutely aware of the potential for suffering. No matter, you know, sometimes we get this, a lot of people have this illusion, this delusion that because their life is good and stuff, that they, they just can't conceive of uh, things going bad. Like, I'm currently on uh, medication, and it actually makes my um, experience very tolerable, much better than it would have would be without it and so uh and so, sometimes i delude myself in thinking that oh everything's going to be fine for you know and, and then i remember oh wait yeah uh life can uh get really bad and uh and you know so maybe after i die what if the uh the consciousness that is being caused by the brain of what we call a chicken in a factory farm is the experience that comes after my death. It is the experience that comes after this experience. Um, so that would not be good, but it is a potential that it, a potential experience that could follow this one. Um, or maybe a zebra getting its face torn off by a crocodile, or maybe um, the mind of some billionaire somewhere uh, having a great time, and who knows what. Or maybe a, a, a chimpanzee ripping the arms off of a monkey, or maybe the monkey that's getting its arms ripped off by a chimpanzee. There's just so many possibilities, <laughs> and who knows what else is going on out there in space somewhere. You know, there might be aliens that are experiencing uh, some kind of, you know, something similar to a holocaust. Uh, it's just, you know, and then, then there may also be consciousnesses that are experiencing just like unbelievably great times, just like loving everything, you know, and like with very, very little suffering or inconveniences. Um, so there's all kinds of potential. I, th I think the, the best scenario would be that if, um, if it is true that we do have souls and that there is a personal subjective continuity after death and that you know, after we get have, after we die, then maybe our souls go wander around the universe. Or even if heaven were true, that would be pretty cool. I, compared to uh, generic subjective continuity, that would be much more preferable. Um, but you know, I I'm agnostic uh, ultimately. But um, I, I don't I don't really know what to. But I just want to make people that naturalists that do believe that consciousness is a, a function of the brain, I want them to be aware of that, okay, if this is how it is, then this is how it is. Um, <clears throat> so I would say like Richard Dawkins, Matt Dillahunty, Sam Harris, and uh, Steven Pinker, and Daniel Dennett and and people like that and whoever else David Eagleman and uh, you know all, all these other uh, famous uh, people naturalists if what they if their worldview is true then that then that is what 
generic subject of continuity is what is going to happen after death. Um, so I, I just, you know, I hope, I hope something, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, so, and, and so this, this kind of complicates the, uh, antinatalist, uh, conversation, it, because <clears throat> there are situations where it actually might be good to, uh, cause new births. So imagine that there's just this arena of people or in animals or whatever, and they're all stuck in this hellish existence where they're all just like tearing each other to shreds and stuff. And there's no way out and they're just, you know, and they're just stuck there. And it's just everything about this place is very, very bad, much worse than my life and your life and pretty much everyone we know. And that's the only place where uh, people are um, and sentient organisms live. And so those are the only experiences that are. But then imagine that um, maybe somehow or somewhere uh, outside of this arena, uh, someone comes to exist somewhere else. And it's much better than what's here in this arena. It's a much better existence over there. And so it might be better to cause more births over there than for this to be the only place where experience occurs or is had. Um, because then, well, you have the possibility of taking this place 